So let's now look at a couple of examples. So what I have over here is the circuit for what is referred to as a one bit saturating counter. So when I get an input of one, I increment the counter. When I get an input of zero, I decrement the counter. But once I've already hit my maximum value, which is one, incrementing any further keeps me at a one. And whereas if I'm at a zero, and if I try to decrement any further, I stay at a zero. And that's what the saturating means over here. So this is usually expressed with a finite state diagram where each circle represents a different state, right? So in this case, my state is a zero. In this case, my state is a one. The value inside the circle represents the output. So in this case, the output is nothing but the state itself, right? So they kind of match up. Then I have these arcs that represent me going from one state to another state. And the label on the arc tells me the input value that causes the movement from one state to the next, right? So if I provide an input of one, I'm going to increment my counter. So I move from a state of zero to a state of one. If I get another input value of one in the next cycle, then I remain at that state. If I instead see an input value of zero, then I need to decrement my counter. So I move from the one state to the zero state. And if I continue to see zeros, then I remain at that zero state. And then when I see a one, I move back into the one state and so on, right? So these finite state machines are usually expressed with a finite state diagram that I'm showing you over here and also a finite state table that basically enumerates all of these cases. And you'll, and you'll soon see an example of that too. Let's extend this to make it a three bit counter. Let's change a few other things as well. This is not going to be saturating. So if I reach the largest value, it goes back all the way to zero. And this can only increment. This, is, this does not have a decrement state. So how many states does my circuit have, right? I can essentially be in state zero, which is the lowest value for the counter. And then with each cycle, I'm going to increment my counter that moves me to a new state. It moves me to state one, two, three, so on, all the way up to seven. And then I loop back to zero, right? So I'm going to have eight states in this case. How many inputs are there? There's only one clock input, right? There's no other input coming in. Okay, so this is what the finite state diagram is going to look like. I start at state zero, move all the way to state one, and you'll see that there is really no label on these arcs because there is no input, right? At every single clock edge, I basically move from one state to the next state. And when I've reached the final one, one, one state, I loop back on the next clock edge to the zero state. So this is a very, very simple finite state diagram. Let's look at something that is a little less trivial. So in this case, I'm designing a traffic light. So there's a traffic light over here. It's obviously got four lights, but you know, two lights are always going to be in sync, right? So these two are both going to be green and these two are both going to be red. And maybe sometime later they flip, right? Where these two, where, where the north-south lights turn red and the east-west lights turn green. Okay, so a decision is made every 30 seconds and the decision is based on what my current state is. And it's also a function of some sensors on the road that tell me if there's a car over here that's heading this way or a car that's heading downwards or a car that's heading towards the west or a car that's heading towards the east. Okay, so I have four sensors as well. So now let's try to answer some of these questions first, right? So how many states do I have? I have only two states. My north-south can be green or my east-west can be green. And when one of these is green, the other one is definitely going to be red, right? So that's not a new state, okay? So I'm either in this case where I'm letting the north-south cars go through, or I'm in this state where I'm letting the east-west cars go through. So there are two states. How many inputs do I have? I essentially have four sensors on the road, but I'm going to combine this north sensor with the south sensor and basically say that there's somebody who's trying to go north-south, okay? Because I don't have a separate light for the north traffic and a separate light for the south traffic. Those two lights are essentially in sync. So I have two sensors. One is telling me that there is a car waiting on the north-south road and a second sensor that tells me that there's a car waiting on the east-west road. And now how many outputs do I have? In this case, my output simply matches my state. If my output is north-south, then those two lights are going to be green and the other two lights are going to be red. Or I'm going to be in an east-west state. Okay, so there's only one output which has one of these two values. 
So now let's look at what the corresponding finite state table is going to be. So this tells me that if my current state is north, that means the north-south light is green. And there are no cars waiting on either road. What I'm going to do in the next 30 seconds is remain at that state, right? Because you'll see over here that a light must only change if a car is waiting on the road, right? So if there are no cars waiting, then the light can remain at whatever that old value was. Then let's say that I'm in north-south state. There's a car trying to go north-south. That's perfect. Again, I don't have to change. I keep my north-south light as green. Now the third case is where I am letting the north-south cars go through and there's a car waiting on the east-west road. So when that happens, my light is supposed to switch and I move from the north state to the east-west state. And then even if there's a car waiting on the north-south road in this, in this fourth case over here, as long as I'm in north and there's a car waiting on the other road, I need to flip and become east. And, and similarly, you have these other four cases as well. Okay, so this represents what is referred to as the state transition table for my finite state machine. And I can also represent this as a finite state diagram. And that's what I'm showing you over here. So I have two states where the north-south road sees green and in the other state, the east-west road sees green. And if there's a car waiting on the east-west road, then I need to flip, right? And similarly, if I'm here and I see a car in the north-south road, then I need to flip. And you'll see that there are several other cases, right? There are a bunch of other cases and I've kind of simplified those. And so let's take one concrete example, right? In these two cases, I'm in north and I remain at north, right? So what is the condition under which I stay at north? I'm basically looking at this bit over here. And if that bit is zero, then I remain in the north state, right? So I express that by saying that this is just the east-west car signal being a zero, right? So if EW car bar is one, then I remain in my north-south state. So I've essentially simplified this diagram to some extent. And similarly, I transition from north to east in these two cases. And the common element over there is the fact that there's a car waiting on the east-west road, right? So that's why this arc was simplified to just have this signal over here saying that if my east-west sensor is high, then it's time for me to move from the north-south green state to the east-west green state.